Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see each of you here. Uh, just a few housekeeping things. I usually do a quick scan and see if there's any new faces. Not that I want to point you out, but uh, uh, if you're new there, um, there, you should be able to find a little card and seat back in front of you and a pen there, fill it out. It'd be fantastic. And, and then there are little containers along the back for both our offering and also for that uh, for those cards. And of course, on the opposite side of the same card is a place for prayer requests. And anyone can fill those out if you want um, the prayer team to take uh, particular items before the Lord in prayer this week. That's the place to do that. I am going to read out of Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 14 through 16 to start us out this morning. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time, I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called the Lord, our righteous Savior. I invite you to stand and I'll pray and we'll uh, sing our first song. Gracious God, our Lord, Creator, Redeemer, we come to you this morning uh, with hearts open, ready to receive a blessing from you. We certainly don't deserve a blessing. Um, it is by grace that you give us anything and everything that we have. And so, Lord, as we, as we seek your face today, I pray that you would reveal yourself clearly to us, both as we worship, as we bring you, lift our voices in worship, and as Pastor Chris shares a message later, your word. Meet with us today as we meet with you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you feel the mountains tremble? <laughs>
Hey, Nick. Oh, I could Ready? see your love forever. All right. Oh.
it uh, sort of brings us, it, it causes a bit of sorrow, but yet we know that it's joy that reigns. And it's the sacrifice. Even you, Lord Jesus, the writer of Hebrews tells us that for the joy set before you, you endured the cross. And so it is with joy that we receive that forgiveness. You bore the burden gladly, Lord Jesus. And we should accept it gladly. Lord, may our joys go out so that even as we leave this place of worship today and we go into um, into the world around us, that, that joy would shine brightly. Thank you, God, for all that you do for us. Thank you for all that you will do for us, all that you've promised. May we always lift your, boy, your name high with our voices. May we always shout your praise. In Jesus' name, amen. My Jesus,
to the promise I have in you. Rockford Rescue Mission on the table out there. We thank those of you who have brought things in. Um, again, look around home if you got stuff that you could bring in. That would be fantastic. Uh, we appreciate that. We'll be collecting until we're hoping the end of the month, but we're probably going to take things down like the third Saturday in November. So if you want to go a little bit after that, that's fine. Uh, like I said, check the list out there. Items that we're going to have. Um, and we've got a short skit for you this morning. Hey dear. Yes. I've got a couple more ideas about how I can gather items for the Rockford Rescue Mission campaign at church. Now, what do you have in mind now? Well, how about we walk around home and look for some items that we aren't using that they can use at the mission? Things like, you know, extra bottles of vitamins or that new bottle of shampoo that I'm not using. 
Well, that's a great idea. I think we can have some canned fruits in the pantry that they can use as well. You know, Tom gave me an even bigger idea. Remember <coughs> that I used to raise animals when the farm was a kid? I think that I can raise some animals and donate the meat to the mission. And what kind of animals are you thinking of? How about dolphins? <laughs> dolphins? Are you crazy? You don't know anything about raising dolphins. Well, how hard could that be? Besides, Tom reminded me that the people who come to the mission need more porpoise in their lives. I figured dolphins was close enough. Porpoise? Porpoise? Tom said they need more purpose in their lives. Not a porpoise. Oh, are, are you sure? Definitely. Just remember, when you go to the group to deliver everything that you've collected, Yes? Make sure that they don't have leave you there. Oh. <laughs> Chris is letting me make an announcement. Can I do that before you, Jane? Yes. Didn't, didn't know there was an order. So, I've been driving around Monroe going, well, this is really a cute town. I like this town. There are four grocery stores instead of one. Um, which is real exciting, but we want to get to know people, not just the cute little shops. So if you will please sign up for the visiting, listening visits. Sometimes I'll be available if you want more humor. Um, <laughs> and it's just a chance to get to know you guys. So sign up in out there somewhere, wherever that direction is. Hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to make a quick announcement, ladies of the church. You all have invitations in your mailboxes. Be sure and pick them up today. All the ladies here have one. <coughs> Including you. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And here we are. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's open our Bibles this morning to Isaiah chapter 61. 61st chapter of the word of God as delivered to and through the prophet Isaiah. Verse 10 this morning. Let's pray as we begin to open God's word this morning. Lord, we do praise you and thank you for all your goodness and your grace. We thank you that you are Lord and King. Yes. We thank you that you have given us so much in which to delight in you. We give you praise. We give you joyous thanks. Lord, we pray that you would by the truths that you have revealed to us in your word, indeed, make our hearts glad. In Christ's name, amen. What do I need more than anything else to make me deeply happy? Dr. Larry Crabb, who is one of America's foremost Christian psychologists, presents that question to us. What do I need more than anything else to make me deeply happy? Dr. Crabb suggests that most of us would give answers such as a spouse who would stop drinking or a medical report that the tissue is benign, a better job, more money, <laughs> an estranged son to come home, a rebellious daughter to straighten out. Now, according to Dr. Crabb, while we would be happy for any of these things to happen, they are the wrong answers to the question, what do I need more than anything else to make me 
deeply happy. The prophet Isaiah, as inspired by the Holy Spirit, clues us into the answer to that question in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, which reads, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. And so the Holy Spirit inspires Isaiah with the answer to our question, what I need to make me more deeply happy than anything else is for my heart to be glad by God. My heart to be made glad by God. It is that which will make us more deeply happy and nothing else comes close. And so Isaiah compares the rejoicing of a heart made glad by God to the rejoicing of a bride and groom. Now let me give a little side note here. Some of us here today or watching online are working through the pain of a divorce, struggling through some marriage issues. And so for you, maybe right now, the image of a bride and groom doesn't quite connect, at least not fully, with rejoicing. But even so, God can still impart to your heart a gladness that flows from Him rather than from your circumstances. And so let's focus on God this morning. Here's the big idea of this morning's message. In Isaiah 61.10, the rejoicing of a bride and groom portrays the rejoicing of the heart made glad by God. As we come to the first part of the verse, we see, first of all, that just as a bride and groom rejoice greatly, so the heart made glad by God rejoices greatly. Isaiah 61.10 speaks of a groom adorning his head like a priest. That's a reference to the turban that the priest would wear. And then the verse also speaks of a bride adorning herself with jewels. See her earrings shimmer. See her necklace sparkle. Great gladness of heart marks a wedding day. And the bride and groom's adornments express the greatness of their rejoicing. A bride and a groom Rejoice greatly. Now, as a bride and groom adorn themselves with jewels and garments of joy, so also God has bedecked us with garments of joy, clothing of rejoicing. It says in the passage, He has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. The Lord has clothed us with garments of salvation because he has rescued us from darkness and from sin and from death. And Christ has arrayed us in a robe of righteousness. For God made him who knew no sin, his very own son, to become sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to us by faith, and so that we are robed in the righteousness of Christ. Oh, this is great cause for gladness and rejoicing. Amen? Amen. 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 Our God has arrayed us in a robe of righteousness. The righteousness of Christ. For on the cross, our sin was imputed to Christ. And Christ's righteousness imputed to us by grace through faith. So the cross of Christ. The cross of Christ is the ultimate clothing exchange. For at the cross, we exchange our robes 
for his. Our robe of sin for his garment of holiness. Our robe of guilt for his robe of innocence. Our robe of shame for his robe of honor. Our robe of condemnation for his robe of salvation. And our robe of unrighteousness for his robe of righteousness. At the cross, at the cross, Christ exchanges his robes for mine. His robes for mine. Such anguish none can know. Christ, God's beloved, Condemned, I showed his foe. He, as though I, accursed and left alone. I, as though he, embraced and welcomed home. What a glad exchange for the sinner who despairs of self and hopes in Christ. And when we despair of self, when we give up every vain effort to try to obtain our own salvation, when we hope in Christ, then we are the glad beneficiaries of this ultimate clothing exchange. His robes are mine. At the cross, Christ has had mercy on me, a sinner. For Christ has clothed himself with my unrighteousness and me with his righteousness. What a glad exchange! What more would our heart need to be made glad? And what greater things could our hearts rejoice? There's none. At the cross, God has bedecked us. He has bedecked us with salvation and righteousness. And these are the garments of gladness. These are the robes of rejoicing. No greater clothing exchange. No greater cause for gladness and rejoicing and delight. No deeper happiness to be found in this. Isaiah 61.10 tells us that being clothed with salvation and righteousness is cause to rejoice greatly. I delight greatly. Not just a little bit, not just somewhat. I delight greatly in the Lord. The 18th century commentator Matthew Henry writes of the greatness of our rejoicing. Those that rejoice in God have cause to rejoice greatly. And we need not fear running into an extreme of the greatness of our joy when we make God the gladness of our joy. Henry is saying that when we make God the gladness of our joy, we cannot rejoice too much. Oh, rejoice greatly, my brothers and sisters. Gaze upon yourself in the mirror of the cross. Can you do that for a moment? Turn on your imaginations. Gaze upon yourself in the mirror of the cross. And as you see Christ suffering for you, while the soldiers gamble for his garments. See yourself be dead in garments of salvation. Gaze upon the mirror of the cross. And while you see Christ bearing your unrighteousness and my unrighteousness in our place, let us see ourselves arrayed in the robe of the righteousness of Christ, his robes for mine. And delight greatly. Delight greatly. 
as you gaze upon the mirror of the cross. Delight greatly in the Lord. Let your heart greatly be glad. I delight greatly in the Lord. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness at the cross, at the cross, by grace, through faith. His clothes, his robe, are mine. So just as a bride and groom rejoice greatly, so the heart made glad by God rejoices greatly. And we cannot be concerned with running into an extreme in our joy. You cannot be too joyful when you delight greatly in the garments of salvation, when we have died greatly in the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. The church is the bride of Christ. And how happy, how happy is the bride of Christ who rejoices greatly because she is bedecked grandly. His robes for mine. As the Holy Spirit breathes out his word through the prophet Isaiah, we see secondly that just as a bride and groom rejoice in each other, so the heart, made glad by God, rejoices in God. The groom delights in her bride's jewels because she is bejeweled for him. And the bride delights in her groom's garments because he is adorned for her. The bride and groom rejoice in each other. Likewise, the bride of Christ rejoices in God. The heart made glad by God is the heart that rejoices in God. As Isaiah 61 10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. Now, why does the heart made glad by God rejoice in God? Because the glory of the garments of salvation is in the Savior. And the glory of the robe of righteousness is in its designer. Let's remember that the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness and the festoon of forgiveness are not at all about us. Not even a little bit are they about us. They are all about So we rejoice in him. We delight in him. I have a whole closet full of ties. With a change of fashion in this era, they pretty much just hang there. <laughs> I have a whole closet full of ties. But of all the ties that, that hang limp in my closet, this one, is my very mostest favoritist. <laughs> now, why of all my ties is, is this one my very mostest favorite? I have other ties that are far more stylish. This one's woefully out of style. I have other ties more able to catch the eye. They, they just reach out and grab the eye of the person looking at it. I have other ties that are far more sharp but I delight in this particular tie more than, far more than all the others. 
Why is that? Because this tie is a hand-me-down from my father, Aww. whose picture you see on the screen along with my beloved mother. He's been with the Lord 13 years, she five years. I delight in this tie more than all the others because I delight in my father who handed it down to me, who raised me, cared for me, and protected me. I rejoice in this tie because I rejoice in my father who handed it down to me, who led me to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and taught me by the example of his life what it means to be godly. This tie is the one that's a hand-me-down from my father, none of the others. This tie is the one passed on to me by dad. And that sets it apart, sets it apart from all the others. Why delight in the garments of salvation? Why delight in the robe of righteousness? Because they are hand-me-downs in Christ from our Heavenly Father. And we delight in Him. And we rejoice he created us. He rescued us. He protects us. He provides for us. He gives us salvation. He gives us righteousness in Christ. We delight in the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness because we delight in our Father who handed these down to us in Christ. And so the heart made glad by God rejoices in God. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. It's no trouble for me to say the same thing again. Rejoice in the Lord. As a bride and groom rejoice in each other, let us rejoice in the Lord. And the garments of of salvation and in the robe of righteousness that are hand me downs from him. The Holy Spirit continues to give us the word through Isaiah. Just as a bride and groom rejoice in a changed life, so the heart made glad by God rejoices for a changed life and a changed life. The bride and groom are arrayed in festive garments because the wedding changes their lives. Two become one. A new family is begun. A new intimacy is initiated. And so the bride and groom rejoice in their changed lives. Likewise, our Lord changes our lives as he clothes us with the garments of salvation. He changes our lives as he arrays us in the robe of the righteousness of Christ. In the Bible, to be clothed with something is a figure of speech or a change in status or a change in condition. We were smothered in a drape of darkness but now we are clothed with garments of salvation. What a change! We were wretched in the rags of our unrighteousness, but now we are arrayed in the robes of the righteousness of Christ. What a change! What a change! And clothing us with his hand-me-downs in Christ, the Father changes our life. And the heart made glad rejoices for this changed life. Christ changes our lives 
by doing what Isaiah 61 verse 3, just a few verses up the page, prophesizes that the anointed one would do. 61.3, he bestows on us a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Bride and groom rejoice in their changed lives as they are clothed with the garments of salvation and arrayed in the robe. We rejoice and change lives. In Bible times, the week leading up to the wedding was a week of joyous celebration with men rejoicing in one area and the women rejoicing in another area. But on the wedding day, the bride was led to her groom's home, dressed in a gown that he had provided for her. No shopping for the dress herself. The groom provided the dress, the wedding dress. And the bride goes to the groom's house in the gown he had provided for her. Then there's another round of feasting. Imagine the potluck <laughs> before the bride and groom go into the wedding chamber. We, the bride of Christ, are now in that week of joyous celebration. And Christ has provided the wedding gown for us. We don't go out and purchase it ourselves. He has purchased the wedding gown for us, as the groom did in Bible times. He has purchased the garment of salvation. He has purchased the robe of righteousness by his blood shed on the cross. Such a grand garment. Such a resplendent robe. Elicit our rejoicing while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, our bridegroom, who shall come to lead us to his throne home, where we shall feast with him at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Amen? Amen. 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 So, just as a bride and groom rejoice in a changed life. So let us, the bride of Christ, with hearts made glad by God, rejoice in a life changed by the garments of salvation and the robe of righteousness in Christ. And so there we have it. One verse, but so rich. The heart made glad by God's forgiveness rejoices greatly in God for a changed life. So how do we apply this to our lives? Well, as we follow the biblical text, just this one verse, the application appears. Let us rejoice greatly in God for the change he makes in our lives. How much do we rejoice? Greatly. In what? No, in whom? In God. Why? For the change he makes in our lives. My brothers and sisters, let us be a gladsome people. We live in a culture of anger, but let us not become like the culture. Let us not be grumpy, but glad. Let us be a gladsome people, joyfully giving thanks to the Father, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his Son, whom he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let us be a gladsome people. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. 
Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sin, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed by the eagles. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. What do I need more than anything else to make me deeply happy? Yes, you would be happy if your spouse stops drinking or if your medical report says the tissue is benign or if you obtain a better job. Or if you get more money. Or if your estranged son comes home. Or your rebellious daughter straightens out. Yeah, you'd be happy. But even if these circumstances do not happen, you can still rejoice greatly, greatly in God. For the change he makes in your life. No matter your circumstances, you can fix your eyes on Jesus. You can see yourself in the mirror of the cross and say, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Lord, teach us to rise above the anger of our culture and to rise above the outcome of circumstances and rejoice greatly in you, Lord God. May we rejoice for you have clothed us with garments of salvation and arrayed us in a robe of righteousness at the cross by your grace through the faith that you bestow upon us. And Lord, how we look forward to that day when the bridegroom who has purchased our wedding garments, the garments of salvation, the robe of righteousness, will himself come to where we are right now and lead us to his home where we will feast at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Keep our eyes expectant as we wait upon you in delight and then rejoice for the salvation and righteousness that you have purchased for us already and for all the good and blessed glory yet to come in Christ's name.